Good evening, I'm Vinnie Politan. Welcome to Prime News. I've sent all the lawyers home. They're gone. They're out of here. All right? Tonight I'm bringing in the psychotherapist, the psychologist. We're going to take a look at Casey Anthony, what she's going to face uh, when she is released over this weekend. And there's a lot of issues that she's got to deal with, right? She's got serious family issues with her mom, with her dad, with her brother. How is she going to handle all of that? Then she's going to have issues with money, right? How is she going to make money? Who is she going to talk to? Is she going to sell her story? How is she going to handle that? Also, some civil lawsuits percolating out there, right? Zanotti Gonzalez, Texas EquiSearch going after Casey Anthony. And also, the folks in Orange County going after her for costs, right? She's got to deal with all that once she gets out. But there's one thing that I think may be the most difficult thing for her to deal with. Something that she may have no idea the level that it exists right now in the court of public opinion. And what I'm talking about is Casey Anthony having to deal with all the hate. As to the charge of first degree murder, verdict as to count one, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. Aggravated child abuse, not guilty. Aggravated manslaughter, not guilty. Let me just say, the devil is dancing tonight. Not guilty! Not guilty. She'll get her judgment someday. Anytime she comes out, it's too soon for me. Okay? What she did was a disgrace to all, it, not just Katie, but all innocent children in the world. That f needs to die. The most painful, f***ing, horrible, slow death ever. It was totally ridiculous. No mother could have a child missing for 31 days and say nothing and be completely innocent. That is not possible. How upset are you right now? Upset that I was crying. It's, it's not right, Jane. I told you this yesterday. It's wrong. She got away with this. And you know it. I guess because it wasn't posted on her Facebook page and it wasn't on social media, they didn't have it on tape, it didn't happen. They call this justice. They say the American flag flies today. It does not. I put the sign on the door just to voice my opinion. If Casey were to walk in your restaurant, would you serve her? Uh, I would not. It's so personal to us, and they just let a baby her out of jail. <laughs> the emotions are high, and people don't like her. And that's putting it mildly. They hate Casey Anthony. And I'm wondering if she is prepared for what she is going to get when she's out in the public. Sure, there'll be some that'll hang on and want to be with her. For whatever reason, probably not a good reason, but there's people that just hate her. Is she prepared? Can you be prepared to be public enemy number one as a free woman? She's been locked in solitary, right? Protective custody in the jail. There's no protection out in the real world. Joining me tonight from Los Angeles, clinical psychologist Michelle Gollin and doctor of psychology Wendy Walsh. Both are contributors at MomLogic.com. And in Agora Hills, California, just outside of L.A., psychotherapist Stacy Kaiser also with us. Ladies, thanks so much for joining me tonight. Michelle Gollin, Thank I'll you. begin with you. Is there any way to prepare her for the onslaught of negativity and just outright hate that she is going to face if she decides to walk the streets of Orlando? Florida or anywhere else in this nation. I have to say, Vinny, it's not. A, I want to. I want to say something that's very important, and I am so glad that you have mental health professionals on as a team today. And quite frankly, I would really like to have a conversation about how Casey Anthony 
could have ended up being who she is. Because that is, I think, the dialogue that is not happening. I can talk about, yes, it's going to be difficult. There's going to be a lot of issues. I am sure she's going to be receiving help from her defense, defense team to prepare her. Is she going to have plastic surgery? Is she going to cut her hair? And all that kind of stuff. But you know what, Benny? As a clinician and a mental health professional, this issue is far greater and deeper and needs to be Michelle, understood does, in the it involve, of does it family. involve her mother her father and yes. her brother all right we're gonna break it down yes. we're gonna break it down throughout the show wendy walsh is she ready or could anyone be ready for the onslaught of hate that she's gonna face uh when she walks out of that jail well, it's difficult for anybody to be ready, Vinny, and I think she least of all, because if you recall, she doesn't take criticism easily, and she doesn't like people around her who uh, deny her or, or what she wants or, or go against her. She likes people who flatter her and compliment her. So she's going to have an inner circle probably of, you know, those people we have in America who don't know the difference between fame and infamy, yep. who even hang out with, you know, notoriously bad people. She'll have a few of those for a little while but eventually she'll anger them as well or they'll anger her in some way and then she's going to be scrambling Stacy Kaiser uh, is there something because uh, we, we heard from Cheney Mason that uh, they've got a bunch of people who are volunteering their time to help her uh, should that be the first thing that she should do before she starts walking around and living the rest of her life I do think she is going to need some help but I will tell you something I think she's equipped with an incredible skill that's going to work in her favor that we've all been criticizing, and that is she has an incredible ability to compartmentalize. It's something we've seen her mother do as well. Here's somebody faced with all of these accusations, and she sits there emotionless. There's hardly ever a tear shed, and I think she's going to compartmentalize this experience as well and go out and be as narcissistic and self-centered as she has been all along through this trial. How difficult... now? Her life before all this happened, I mean, we heard people talk about she was fun to be around. She, she was very popular. She had a lot of boyfriends. Um, you know, people liked her. She's an attractive young girl, liked to go out and party and do this. She had the cutest little girl in the world. So I'm sure anytime she was in public with little Kaylee, people were fawning over her and fawning over uh, this little girl. It's going to be quite a different situation, Michelle. And, I, and, I, and we're going to break down how she got here, okay? We're going to break it down, trust me. But here off the top, I just want to deal with this initial reaction. And, 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 and what does someone do who has been loved and, and chased and, and you, know, you know, so popular do now when well, you come out and people to your left and to your right are giving you dirty looks? Right. Well, I think it's going to be exactly like Wendy Walsh said, which is that this is a person who is probably going to respond ragefully, negatively, to, you know, feel uh, righteously uh, indignant about her own position and where she, belie she believes she belongs in this story, in this society. And she's going to be respond in many ways, I have to say, very similar to what we saw with George and Cindy Anthony, which is uh, defensive and rageful and reactive. Folks, the story's not over yet. Casey Anthony will be released this week. And make sure you stay on top of all the details of this story. Follow me on Twitter. The address is at Vinnie Politan. Civil lawsuits, depositions. Hey, guess what? Friday, 10 a.m., another court hearing down in Orlando involving the Zenaida Gonzalez case and a deposition. So I'll keep you on top of all the details right here. Coming up, folks, we're going to continue. The lawyers are gone. I'm the only one left, all right? And I'm retired from the, from the practice of law. We've got Michelle Gallen, Wendy Walsh, Stacey Kaiser with me. We're going to break down Casey Anthony and her relationship with her mother, Cindy. Casey Anthony and her mom Cindy Anthony. I always thought this went to the heart of this case and, and why this all happened. It had something to do with that relationship. These two just did not mix well together. I want to show you um, Cindy Anthony visiting her daughter Casey back in jail. Just to give you a little more flavor, remind you what this relationship was like. She's so 
don't let me... Come on! Casey, hold on, sweetheart. Settle down, baby. Nobody's letting me speak. You want me to talk? And All right, give I'll me I'll listen three to seconds to see Go, something. Sweetheart. All right, Wendy Walsh, is this a, a relationship that can be resurrected somehow? Is it damaged beyond all repair? Is it the cause of all this? Cindy and Casey, Wendy. Well, I'm always amazed when dysfunctional relationships tend to go on and on and on and on. And although I think they've sort of separated for now, we know that uh, Casey did not want her to visit the mother to visit the court, the the uh, jailhouse. Um, there may be a time when that daughter and that weird enmeshed relationship may be coming back to mommy for something because this is a kind of learned behavior. Their strange enmeshment and. Uh, and it's clear to see, like, the, the mother's reacting to her in the strangest way. It's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Talk to me. And the daughter is so completely frustrated at that point because clearly she's not being heard and probably hasn't been heard for two decades. I'm wondering, Stacey Kaiser, and, I, and I'm wondering about this dynamic in the house, if it's that there's this strange, you know, there's a strained relationship and that causes Casey's behavior or if Casey's behavior causes the strange relationship. I mean, we know that Casey Anthony was siphoning her grandfather's nursing home fund, stealing from friends, not working for two and a half years. What do you think about the chicken and the egg here? Which, which, which came first? Well, I do always say that children learn what they live. And so there is a strong possibility that a lot of what we're seeing has come out of her family of origin. But I will also say this, that isn't always true in the case of mental illness. And I do think that there are some things that are psychologically wrong with Casey. She's also an adult responsible for her own opinions and actions and point of view. And all of that can be leading to this as well. I want you to take a listen here and remind you that Cindy Anthony uh, also testified for the defense about the core form. A lot of people think she went up on the stand and lied for her daughter to save her life. Take a listen. In March of 2008, you doing any types of searches for any items that might include chloroform? Yes. I started looking up chloroform. I mean, chlorophyll, and then that prompted me to look up chloroform. Michelle Gall, we've been trying to figure this out since the beginning, and it's difficult. Uh, I don't know if we ever can, uh, but Cindy and Casey, the relationship, what impact it's had on Casey's life, Casey's lies, and perhaps ultimately on Kaylee's life here. I have to say, part of what, again, I obviously don't treat uh, any of these individuals, but I have to say, as a clinician and a behavioral uh, uh, psychologist, what I see here is, and I, and I wrote about this when Casey's jailhouse letters came out in 2009, is an extremely narcissistic mother with a daughter who most likely has borderline personality disorder that developed out of what appears to me and allegedly to be an incestuous, abusive family. And what I have seen in Cindy Anthony is also very much a, an ability to try to protect herself, her own image, and that of the family. And again, I think that what we've seen is that the, all these individuals have been manipulative, have been uh, deceitful in different ways, and have felt as if they are all spinning a tail. We just don't know what they are each trying to avoid that gets out. Stacy Kaiser, should there be a reunion? Should mom and daughter uh, get back together and try to work things out and, and, and figure out what the rest of their lives are going to be like? You know, as a mother, I question my own self about what would I tolerate for my own child. I mean, here Casey is literally throwing her father and um, Cindy's husband under the bus in her trial. And part of what I'm, and then, and then I have to say that Cindy really surprised me when she mouthed "I love you" to her daughter. She came to visit in the jailhouse. It made me think that she is reaching out and trying to connect. I think she's the peacemaker for the family, someone who's always trying to smooth things over. I think she's going to keep trying to do that, and Casey will ultimately succumb to that. Wendy, if they did get together, should they talk about Kaylee? 
Of course they should. They should start talking about what happened to Casey in her early years. The whole family should be in therapy together. There's so much disorder here. It seems like everybody in this family feels that they're above the law, potentially perjuring themselves, potentially the father helping to cover up an alleged drowning. I mean, what is really going on? It's a family of liars, and that's the family system that seems to be accepted in this group. So they're never going to have an honest, intimate, authentic relationship until they can get past the lie and get into the reality of who they are. We've sent the lawyers home. We've got the Sykes in the house tonight, folks, here on Prime News. We're breaking down Casey Anthony. Uh, she's going to be released over the weekend. What are her relationships going to be like? What shall we face? Coming up, we're going to talk about Casey and her brother, Lee Anthony. This and a lot of unanswered questions during the trial. Should these two somehow, some way, reconcile, get back together and figure out what their relationship should be for the rest of their lives. Frankly, we're going to find out. Something, whatever's going on, is going to be found out. So why not do it now? Save There's nothing to find out. There's absolutely nothing to find out. I'm not even what I told the detectives. Well, you know, everything I she's telling no them is lies. If I knew where Kaylee was, do you think any of this would be happening? No. Talk about a confusing, vague relationship, brother and sister, Casey Anthony and her brother Lee. We still can't figure it out. Allegations uh, of uh, attempted molestation, yet no one asked him during the trial the direct question about it. Uh, where exactly is that relationship? We don't know. My guests are back with me. Uh, we've got the uh, Casey Anthony Psych Summit tonight. I want you to take a listen to this because this was a very interesting moment, and I thought it was one moment that really shed, I don't know if it shed light, but sort of put a, a cloud over the entire Anthony family when Lee Anthony uh, testified about when Kaylee was born. Take a listen. Mr. Anthony, can you tell us why you were angry and who you were angry with as to why you didn't go and see Kaylee and Casey at the hospital? I was uh, I was very angry at my mom and I was also angry at my sister I mean I was just angry at all, everyone in general that they didn't that they didn't want to include me Stacy Kaiser this relationship brother and sister where where does it go and 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 should this be a situation where Casey Anthony or Lee Anthony, they re reach out to each other? They're siblings. You know, this is just one of the examples of how many secrets and lies were deeply set within that family. And here's what I can tell you. What we know about dysfunctional families is that siblings tend to get either a very close bond or they break really far apart. It's like a polarized relationship. And I have to believe by the emotional reactions that they were once very close and now they're really broken apart. And so it's my hope that they will be able to reconnect because I think there's some healing that needs to be done there and can be done there. And all these moments with yes. Lee Anthony seem so vague and we don't quite understand what's going on. Like, for example, at, at Kaylee's memorial, a lot of people remember uh, this moment. CMA, I miss you. I love you. CMA, I am so proud of you. I hope you're proud of me, too. Michelle Gall, a lot of people at that moment were wondering, CMA, is it Kaylee? Is it Casey? Uh, who was he talking about? And, and again, it, it just gets to this, we just don't know. There's something going on, but we don't know what it is. Right. I have to say, I, I think after, after the verdict and everything that came down and after actually watching Lee's testimony, was my feeling was that there really was, as Stacy said so astutely, that there, there is a connection here. And often kids in abusive households, whether it's physical, emotional, or sexual, um, even if he did contribute to some of the sexual molestation, 
they they still feel victimized by both of the parents and i think what is going to happen is you're going to see them together hopefully we'll see um, up next we're going to talk about george anthony It isn't, and it hasn't been because of you or mom or Lee or anything that anyone in our family has done that's made things the way that they are. Maybe we didn't let you be the best Dad, mom. I, I, it's you, nobody's you are a great fault. Mom. It's nobody's fault. Just, I know how much I love you and how much I miss you, and I can't wait to see you, Dad. You are the best father, and by far the best grandfather that I've ever, I've ever met. I'm going to say that, and I mean that with all my heart. Don't for a second think otherwise, because I won't let you, because it's, it's not the case. Best father, best grandfather, what a complicated relationship, especially in light of everything we heard during the course of this trial. Welcome back to Prime News. No lawyers. The only lawyer left is me. I'm retired, folks, okay? I've got Michelle Gollin, Wendy Walsh, Stacey Kaiser with me, all taking a look inside the mind of Casey Anthony and, and looking at the family dynamics uh, this all on the eve of Casey Anthony's release back into society. Um, daddy issues. We talk a lot about daddy issues, Michelle Gollin. Uh, this, yes. to me, seems to be uh, another one of these difficult issues. We don't know what may or may not have happened between these two, but it's obvious that there's something going on, Michelle. Absolutely. I mean, I have to say, my my feeling about George Anthony, particularly after his testimony and early on even, was that this also is an individual who who feels very manipulative to me, very much um, something else is going on. And and I think we know that he lied. I think we know he will get up and lie in front of people. And I think that there was something very dark going on in that home. And it, and it seems to me that George, the things that he did, even right when the car was discovered and some of the evidentiary things, showed me that there was some consciousness of knowledge. Um, and, and it's it's there's more. There's more. There, there's much more to this story. I want you to take a listen to Casey Anthony from August of 2008 talking about her relationship with her father in one of those jailhouse visits. This is one of the main reasons that I chose dad. It's because he won't sit there and keep asking me the same questions 500 times over like you and Lee have done. I want to see each and every one of you, but at least with dad. And honestly, the, the true main reason that I want to see him is because him and I have had a broken rela relationship for such a long time. And we were just finally starting to talk the day that this unfolded, the day that I was brought here. You know, also yeah, last I night, wait, wait, I, I want to play you one more thing just to give a little more context here to, to this relationship. Uh, last night on Dr. Drew, Tracy McLaughlin, who's an associate of Leonard Padilla, who's inside the house with Casey Anthony and the whole family, uh, talked about what she heard, what she saw. Take a listen. I'll go back to the first morning I was there. I woke up to George screaming at Casey. First morning? The very first morning. What was he screaming about? Where is my granddaughter? What have you done with her? Um, you know, I know you're lying. You know, quit lying. It was just this huge, you know, quit lying to me. Where's my granddaughter? And she's screaming back. Don't treat me like a scumbag cop. You know, you, why don't you try being a father for once? It's this huge fight. Well, she comes in the bedroom. I was in her room. So she came in there just mad because she said my dad won't. He always treats me like he's a cop. He always thinks I'm lying. Woo! How about that, Stacy? You know, one of the things that I think is so interesting about George is, while well, his whole family, there's so many lies, it's really hard to figure out, but he is a complex person because he's the one that we keep seeing crying, and yet we hear that he's screaming and yelling. And I really think that this is a very highly dramatic, volatile man, and that we don't even begin to know the depths of why those relationships were so destroyed, why there were so many secrets and so many lies. But him being at the helm of it all is probably likely. Wendy, I know I him, think, you him know, wanting to get answers. It, it seems to me like he's screaming at her, saying, "Listen, I know you're lying. Guess what? He's right." Yeah, but he's also showing us this weird range of, of his emotions that show me that he's kind of chaotic. Now, we all know, and this is not to put down wonderful cops and firefighters and uh, military men and, and women, but t sometimes there is a group of people who have kind of chaotic interiors 
her search for boundaries by joining a very rigid institution or system. It could be uh, the clergy, it could be academia even, but the structure that is involved in these kinds of organizations like the police organization is what they crave. Now again, I'm not saying this about everybody who's in the police force, but the fact that he's a retired detective and now I'm seeing this range of emotions coming from him makes me wonder how chaotic his interior really is. Jose Baez, yeah, in his also, opening statement, uh, shocked us all with a very specific story of sexual abuse. And Jose Baez wasn't there when Casey Anthony was eight years old, so we know where he got the information from. I want to play it for you one more time, and then I, I want to ask our, our panel here whether or not they think that these allegations are true or another one of Casey's lies. Take a listen. This child, at eight years old, learned to lie immediately. She could be 13 years old, have her father's ass in her mouth, and then go to school and play with the other kids as if nothing ever happened. Nothing's wrong. That will help you understand why no one knew that her child was dead. All right. This is a very specific allegation, right, about what George Anthony was doing to Casey Anthony when she was eight and 13 years old. We heard no evidence of it at trial, obviously. Uh, we know that. But do you think there's anything to this? And I'll start with Michelle. You know, Vinny, this is what Stacy was talking about, the ability to compartmentalize. And again, what we know about character logical issues is that they really are defined by the trauma that the, the person has experienced. And Casey was doing bad things and chat and 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 doing illegal things and manipulating early on. That doesn't come out of a family where things are not happening. If I had heard evidence or behavioral things that something that she was she was raped at 12 or these other issues of abuse were, but that's not what has been re reported. What is being shown and said is is what actually clinically makes sense with what I am seeing and particularly the fact that Cindy's response in the letter that Casey wrote about being sexually abused possibly by George and uh, molested by by her brother was that she was a whore that's why she was a whore and that is a classic response by uh, a family member who wants to keep the cone of silence and the persona of nothing happening under this roof Hey, you know, last night on uh, Nancy Grace, Harry Kropp, a clinical psychologist who evaluated Casey Anthony, spoke a little bit. I want you to hear what he had to say and get your response. Do you attribute all of the lying and, uh, during the days after Kelly was murdered? Well, it wasn't until after I probably spent all those hours with uh, Casey and, of course, you know, we're talking three years prior to the period of time that I really started working with her. Um, and I think one really has to understand some of the dynamics. I know you used many times the term dysfunctional family, and I don't think anybody is going to challenge that. Um, this was a family that had a lot of secrets. This was a family that had a lot of um, inappropriate ways of coping with conflict issues and the lying was uh um casey herself can't even explain that secrets it always comes back to secrets wendy walsh is is this a family and maybe it starts with the uh, george and, and and casey sitting down together and just you know unveiling all these secrets is is that what they need to do if you're talking about in terms of healing, I think the whole family needs to get together because the, the, the secrets and the colluding go all over the place. Of, there might be some colluding between the siblings, of course, who may have sought comfort in each other, and that may have become incestuous. We don't know. And, of course, there's the, uh, the father and daughter who, up until the murder of Kaylee, were not even talking. Remember she said that? Or their relationship had been broken, and now it was getting good now that they, she finally had Daddy's attention because Kaylee was missing. So there are all kinds of things that they need to talk about together together but there is years of work ahead for this family if they hope to heal
And it'll be interesting to see. We know that Lee Anthony is getting married to his fiancée, Mallory. There'll be a wedding, and I wonder if that's when the whole family gets back together. Anyway, folks, if you want to stay on top of all the details of the Casey Anthony story, make sure you're following me on Twitter. A lot of things to talk about, things happening. 10 a.m. on Friday, there's a court hearing in the Zenaida Gonzalez case. John Morgan, the attorney for Zenaida Gonzalez, wants to depose Casey Anthony while she's still in jail. Follow me at Vinnie Politan. All right, coming up, Twitter, Facebook phone calls. I want to hear from you on today's question that I have for you. Here's my question. What do you think Casey Anthony will do once she is released? 877-TELL-HLN. Anthony, the last time she was released, she's getting ready to be released again over the weekend. Not guilty verdict. You know all about it. My question of the day for all you folks at home. What do you think Casey Anthony will do once she's released? Stacey Kaiser, Michelle Gallen, Wendy Walsh back with me. Here's what the folks are saying on Twitter tonight. Uh, Amida tweets, um, doll herself up and party like there ain't no tomorrow. Rumors have it she's coming to Puerto Rico. Well, she's not welcome. Apparently, my is from Puerto Rico. Kathy tweeting tonight, she will run for Congress. <laughs> Pat tweeting, she'll have another child and she'll neglect that child like she did with her first. So sad and so avoidable. I want to talk about that for a moment here. Stacey Kaiser, do you think Casey Anthony has another child in her future? And I don't know if it's one year, two year, five years down the road. Do you think that she will have another baby? I do think that she will have another baby. I mean, I hear she's already fielding off offers for marriage. I'm guessing those people will want to have children. And she is maintaining her innocence and her love for her daughter. And I think that she's going to want to project that image and have another child. Janine tweeting tonight, I think she will go back to her dysfunctional family and try to pick up where she left off with her friends. Michelle Gallon, you think that's... A possibility here? Is there any chance that she goes back to live with George no, and Cindy I, and have a I relationship? Absolutely. And how about with her friends? I, I, I'm not sure about her friends, but I absolutely uh, think that she will not have anything to do with her parents. And um, maybe actually, if the line of thinking is true uh, that there was abuse, will maybe start to actually understand what the family was doing and under and that's going to be hopefully to me that is the healthiest best case scenario if you believe that she was sexually abused billy tweets Vinny, i wait Vinny, wendy i got, I got I one for you here wendy billy okay, tweeting she'll, she'll have the life that she wanted before she had Kaylee. That was the, that was the motive that was argued by the prosecution. That you know the Bella Vita, the beautiful life, the life that you can't have if you are a single mother. Wendy Walsh, is it possible that she tries to take advantage of the fact that hey, I don't have that enormous responsibility. I'm going to do what I want, when I want, with whoever I want. In the short term, she's definitely going to try that. Um, and I think that the people that will be surrounded, surrounding her will be people who are in love with infamy, as I said, that, that love notoriously bad boys and bad girls. But um, I disagree with Michelle. I think that this is a short-lived thing because she didn't come to any real healing or awakening that I saw in this trial. And I think she's cutting off her parents as a little bit of an angry defense at this time but she's gonna come back to mommy and daddy when she needs something again because they've been her lifeline i mean a dysfunctional enmeshed lifeline but they've been her lifeline let's go to the phone lines tonight joe is in ohio good evening joe what do you think casey will do once she's released well first benny i think there's no bella vita in hell and secondly, I think she's going to do a lot of interviews and uh, book deals and uh, movies or whatever. And uh, I think she's just going to stay uh, lay low. Lay low, take the money, and then stay out of the public spotlight. You know, take the money for the interviews, the pictures, the photo shoots, everything else, and then lay low. Interesting, Joe. Thanks so much for the call. Appreciate it. Uh, let's go to Facebook, see what folks are saying there. Geraldine says, party. 
get pregnant again and kill another baby. That is what I think. Um, how about this, Stacey Kaiser? Do you think she has future run-ins with the law? You know, I think that there's a good chance that that could happen. I mean, I really believe that this girl is a sociopath, and I don't think that's going to change no matter how many book deals she gets offered, how many television she offer she has, or how many, you know, how she ends up free from the jail. Shalila says, uh, start making money from the people that provide her to do so, pay off legal fees against her, then she will carry on like nothing ever happened. Michelle Gollan, is that possible that, you know, knowing what we know about Casey Anthony and what she did in those 31 days, that she can extend those 31 days and live like, hey, I was never arrested, my daughter never died, and just kind of keep that out of her mind and, and move forward? I don't think so. I think, you know, what, what she was doing in the compartmentalizing uh, before has now really been broken open. I mean, I think if... if if we believe that there was sexual abuse and deep things going on in that family, and I think any clinician would believe that there is something deeply wrong in that family beyond just Casey Anthony being either a sociopath or a borderline personality or, or any of those things. This is going to hopefully be a conversation that we can start to have as a country around what is going on in homes and how does this happen. And what we can only hope for is that maybe something good out of this c can be that conversation. Because I think the divisiveness that we're seeing, Benny, is not it is not just the rage about her not being convicted of something. There is also confusion. Confusion about why a jury saw it one way and why some people saw it another way. And, and it's not just that they didn't when you, when get you say, it. I think they got something. Yeah. When you say some people, you mean most people, I think is what you meant to say. Katie's in Texas. I have to say, Benny, I, uh, Katie's in Texas. i got to take this phone call real quick. Katie's in Texas. Hello? Katie, you're on the air. Okay, what I'm calling about is that you're asking what she will do now? Yes. I've been watching this for three years, and she's just like my daughter who was diagnosed with borderline personality. Her family didn't ruin her. She ruined their family. She is so full now of how wonderful she is, and she can get away with anything. She's going to come down. She'll end up in prison again and will never have a decent life. She's a poor, sick little girl, and I feel so bad for Cindy and George. And if you'll remember at the very beginning of this, Cindy's co-workers had mentioned that she'd come to them saying that she had a problem with her, with Casey, went to a therapist. The therapist said, kick her out because she's stealing from everybody and get custody of Kaylee. And that was not done. Katie, thanks so much for the call. Appreciate it. Michelle Gollins. Stacey Kaiser, Wendy Walsh is going to stay with us. Michelle, I'll let you finish your thought on the other side of this. We're taking your phone calls, folks. What do you think Casey will do once she is released? And it's going to happen this weekend. Question today, what do you think Casey Anthony will do once she's released? Back with me, Stacey Kaiser, Michelle Gowan, Wendy Walsh. Michelle, I cut you off before. Yes. Finish your thought, please. That's okay. You know, I, I want to let you know, I, I feel there around this issue, I tend to have what is an unpopular view, and I want to, and, and it's important because. What has to be addressed is the issue of what happened before June 16th. And I know as a, as a clinician and someone who has worked for over two decades in sexual abuse and domestic violence, that there was something traumatic and, and, and dark going on. And I received countless emails of people thanking me for holding the, 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 the conscious straight view that there is something to address here as a country larger and that's why i'm so glad you don't just have the lawyers on today <laughs> and so michelle you said two decades uh, two decades what are you like a, a female doogie hauser or something how is that two decades of <laughs> well i started i started working in domestic violence in my undergraduate work okay. at usc all right makes I some start, sense you know all the folks at home are doing math right now by the way <laughs> I, I got to read this tweet from Susan because I want to get a reaction from you guys. Uh, Susan tweets, I think she'll have a hard time on the outside. Someday the guilt will be too much for her and her good life will end. 
How about it if she is actually, and she got, let's say she got away with murder. Let's just presume that that happened, Stacey Kaiser. How does she live with that guilt? I don't think she's feeling any guilt. I mean, I really believe that she has this ability to convince herself that everything is okay. I do think there's something deeper there. I think that's the reason she does it. But I think that her denial is so deep that even she believes it. Stacey Kaiser, Michelle Gollin, Wendy Walsh, great to have all the ladies and no lawyers here. All right. <laughs> I see you guys. We're going to do this again. We'll do it again for sure okay. uh, on the next story. Thanks so much, ladies. Appreciate it. Thank you. And finally tonight, everyone is wondering what Casey Anthony will do when she is finally released this weekend. Well, I think she's going to be whisked off somewhere for a photo shoot and a sit-down interview. But I think what she doesn't do will tell us a lot more about who she is. Here's my point. Now, if Jose Baez told us the truth in his opening statement and little Kaylee drowned and Grandpa George orchestrated a cover-up and framed Casey for first-degree murder, then Casey Anthony never had an opportunity to say goodbye to her beloved little girl. If that is true and she is innocent, the first thing she should do is demand custody of little Kaylee's ashes. And then she should make her way over to Suburban Drive to pay her respects to her daughter at the site where she was discarded like trash. Now, if that's not the first thing she does, I think it tells us all a lot more about who Casey Anthony really is. That's all for now. Jane Velez Mitchell's up next. I'm Vinnie Politan. Have a fantastic night, and don't forget to hug the kids.